Sí, sí. freezing just oh I'm on oh hello hello <laughs> good morning everybody and welcome to St Francis Church um, it's a real delight to welcome you here this morning and um, I hope you're enjoying the church this way round I must say I quite like it you get the wonderful garden view we can see everybody coming in up the path 
So that's quite amusing, isn't it? Um, but we are so excited uh, to celebrate the baptisms of the whole Frisbee family in our service this morning. We're starting with our youth and young people in with us uh, while we have the beginning of our service and enjoy our baptisms. And then the youth and young people will go out to their own groups uh, for the second half of the service. And so because it's a service of baptism, um, we're going to start with an introduction, uh, quite a traditional one, uh, the words of the Church of England that help us to understand a little bit about what baptism is about. So I'm going to say an opening prayer and then I'll go into the introduction. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you are with us, that you were here before we were this morning. And we pray that in this space this morning, we might encounter something of you, something of your presence with us. Would you come by your Holy Spirit this morning that we might know you better? Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit and has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity and God calls us to fullness of life. There's a special prayer for baptism Sundays and I hope you can uh, turn, you can see the screen either on one side or the other and do join me in the words in bold. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by the same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We're going to start off with a song of worship that reminds us of God's goodness and his faithfulness. So would you like to stand if you're able and if you'd like to as we worship together? Your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I will sing Of the goodness of God i 
It's lovely to have some visitors with us. And I, I love to say, I say this quite often, we are such a diverse bunch here at St. Francis. We love that. We love that we're so different. It means we worship in different ways. We get baptised in different ways. Uh, some of us put our hands in the air when we worship. Some of us prefer a splash to a dunk when we're baptised. But you know what? We're all, one, we're all one church family and we're all here to follow Jesus and to seek to be more like him. So I just wanted to say that at the outset. Now, talking of uh, different people, <laughs> Liz and Elliot uh, would love to just say a little bit about, <laughs> that was a good segue, did you think? That was a good one. Uh, talking of diversity, um, Liz and Elliot would love to say a little bit about why they would like to be baptised. So uh, let me give you a mic. It's very dangerous to hand Elliot a mic. Um, <laughs> Would you, who's going first? Go for it, Elliot. Oh, me. Uh, hello. How are we all doing? You all right? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, so, uh, I just need a wash. Uh, that's what it is, I smell. But no, actually, in many ways I do, um, which, is, which is great. So, I've been, uh, for those who don't know, I, I work quite close within different people within the Christian community. Uh, my company, we record Christian audiobooks and bits and pieces like that. And I won't go into that too much, but... One thing that's come quite clear is that it became a calling, that literally everyone who walked through my door to be recorded was a Christian, and I just always felt like the conversation that we were having during these sessions was something more than literally just a recording session. It was something that was happening, and I spoke to God one day, and I said, right, I get what's happening here, and I got goosebumps all over my arm, and I said, right, I'll do it. Just, just throw it my way, and we will get it done, whatever, whatever you want, we will do it. And... That sort of led to me starting this new podcast, which we're launching soon, called um, The Outskirts of Faith Podcast, where we're reaching out to people who are on the outskirts who are thinking, oh, you know, I want to try it. You know, I know there's more, but I'm not sure if it's right for me, and people might think it's weird. And it's, we're lowering down those barriers, and I've got some really amazing people on. But then something happened where, and I'm going to be careful how I phrase this, because of some people who are in here, but... What happens is I think that when you become really focused with working with God and you head in a di direction and you suddenly become aware of, let's phrase it as negativity and other things that may want to stop you, that may want to pull you. You know, you think to yourself, God wants me to do this, but then you feel that there's a bit of pull saying, well, you don't have to do that. You know, you can do this. And I was praying to God about it and I said, you know, I'm a bit worried about this. this. This isn't a nice thing to do. And I spoke to a couple of my sort of um, Christian sort of uh, spiritual sort of advisors and that about it, and they'll pray. And anyway, the, that night I got home and it was bothering me. I'm, that's where I'm going to stop, but it was bothering me quite a lot. And that night I had what I could only describe as a vision. And the reason why it was a vision is because it was so much more than the dream. I could paint it for you now if I was good at painting, which I'm not. I'm terrible. I'll leave that to a CC. But basically... I was standing in this vastness. It was literally me, and I was so exposed. Not, not, I mean, I had clothes on, you know, but I felt sort of exposed, and, and it was quite scary. And then suddenly, all this armor was going poof, 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 smacking me in the face, building me up to the point that there was no cracks, no nothing. It was just this armor that was on me. And I want to point out at this point that I hadn't really read Ephesians, okay? I was more sort of like, you know, the sort of Matthew, Mark, Luke kind of guy and John. And anyway, all this went bang, bang. And, and I suddenly felt really secure. Like I was in the same vastness, but I was so secure. It was amazing. And then something happened where this water was just pouring over me. It was just pouring over me. It was like going all over this armor, just reaching down to my feet and everything like that. And I literally woke up like, oh, my goodness. And I said to Elizabeth, I said, God wants me to be, get, be baptized. I said, I said, no question. God wants me to be baptized and wants to draw a line on everything up to this point and go forward doing all the work that we're doing together within the Christian community, helping others, pulling more people to the church in his name. And, and just to top it off, the, that suddenly the YouVersion Bible popped up on my phone and it was Ephesians. And, it, and I was like, that's really weird. It came up in the morning. It never comes up in the morning. It's in the afternoon. And it says, wear the armor of God. And I was like, done, dusted, sealed. So that's my story. Thank you so Thank you. much, Elliot. We're going to think a little bit. <laughs> yes, give him a clap. Yeah. 
brilliant. Thank you. Do you want to... You can have a seat if you like. I'll have one. Thank you. I'm going to have a seat. Me too. Um, <laughs> Me too. I need my phone because I need to look at something on it in a second. Um, I was super nervous about doing this. I'm going to cry. Um, and last night I laid on my bed and I said to God, please... Um, Give me the strength to be able to sit in front of you and tell you my story. Sorry, I'm going to cry all the way through it, so Fine. just go with it. We love it. We love it. <laughs> I do. I cry a lot in church. Um, and so I laid on bed and I said to God, please give me the strength tomorrow to be able to tell my story. And um, about five minutes later, Elliot came up and he turned on his phone and he said, oh, we've had a message from Graham. And he played this message from Graham and it said, um, you're going to be fine tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. And I was like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Graham, for that message coming through you. That was really, really what I needed. Um, so if you had told me six months ago, a year ago, that I'd be getting baptised today, I would have absolutely run a mile. And that's not because I didn't believe in God. I've had faith and belief in God my whole life and um, felt his presence and spoken to him. But I have never, ever called myself a Christian, and that has been quite deliberate. Um, I think I've been scared of the commitment, the, the step over the line. Um, and I think that is because I was worried what people would think, um, that they would put me in a box, stereotype me, give me beliefs that I don't believe in or things I don't agree with. Um, I was a bit scared of church, um, the words that are used in church that I don't understand. And it's really important to me to agree with what I'm saying. Like today for the baptism, I needed to know the things I'm agreeing to, I truly mean. Um, and so there's a lot of words like submission, fear, that I needed to understand and deal with. Um, and I was really scared that I couldn't do it. I couldn't be a Christian, that I wasn't worthy, good enough, that I didn't know enough. Um, I'd not read the Bible. Um, I didn't, I was worried I have to come to church every Sunday. <laughs> I find it hard enough to get here for 10 o'clock when we come. And I felt like there was going to be all these rules and regulations that would remove and take away what I feel is a really deep, natural, raw thing, having a relationship with God and Jesus. And I, and I didn't want to formalize it in a, in a structured way that didn't feel right. And, um, and I've been to lots of wonderful courses, the Bible course and the Alpha course, and, and I have to say the people at this church have really played a massive role in being so open, no pressure, um, answering so many questions in such an open way, and I'm so grateful. And then in Alpha, um, a, f a few months ago, um, there was the question, what would you ask if you wanted to ask God one question? And I'd been feeling quite restless about what God had wanted from me for a while, and I was like, I'd ask him what he wants of me. Um, and therein lies he then decided to give me the answer. So um, one evening I came over to church because I like to do that sometimes when I need just some time with God, and I came and I stood outside of church under that arch, and I could see, it was Christmas time, so I could, well, January, so I could see the cross, both crosses, and I just stood um, with myself, with God, for as long as I felt I needed to, um, and then... I went away and I got in my car and I turned on my um, stereo and a song was playing. I mean, I had listened to this song hundreds of times in my life and I could not tell you what the words were of this song. Um, and then when I turned the car on, these words played. This is why I need my phone so I can tell you what these words were. And, um, and the words, the way I heard the words, it's like Elliot described about his dream, like it, entirely different to how I would hear the words of a, of a song normally listening. And the words I heard were, um, follow me where I go, what I do, who I know. Make it a part of you to be a part of me. Take my hand and say you'll follow me. And all the time that you're with me, we will be at home. And in that moment, I knew 100% that I was being given a message from God. Um, and I was like, okay. Um, and then I drove home, went in... Um, looked up the song so I could get the words and reread the words, and I was like, oh, okay. And I said to Elliot, um, do you think I'm crazy? I think this is a message from God. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that'll be God. Um, so <laughs> then I lived with it for a little while, and then eventually got the courage to talk to Sarah about it. And I was like, Sarah, you're going to think I've gone mad. Um, <laughs> but can I tell you about this experience I had? And I told Sarah, and she was like, yeah, yeah, so that'd be God. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then after that, then I 
got a second opinion, <laughs> which Cliff's always useful for. And Cliff was like, yeah, wow, that'll be God. So I lived with that for a little while, and then um, I didn't do anything with it. And then I was in the car another day, and I just was thinking about it and thinking, oh, I, need, I need to d take a step. I need to do something. I'm basically being asked to step, to step forward. And I randomly turned the volume up on my... Um, car radio really loud and these words sung out at me and again it was the same feeling the same resonance um i give you all of me and you give me all of you and my reaction this time is that i laughed and i went i hear you <laughs> i hear you um and what god was saying is that he wanted me just to give him myself and there's not an exam to become a christian and um he's not looking up how many verses of what Bible I've read and studied and do I understand every word and because what he's looking at is is into my heart and I'm gonna cry again and and what is important is that this is the beginning of the journey and and today I take his hand I'm gonna cry again and he'll do the rest with me I don't need to know the rest now and I think I felt like I needed to be good enough and then I could go and today I'm going to become a Christian and actually that is I was missing the point massively and I am good enough and when I think that I always remind myself that if I was the only person in the world Jesus would have died for me and therefore I must be good enough as I am now so here I am as I am now um, getting baptized and really excited to call myself a Christian and ever since I said to Sarah please will you baptize me I have just had the greatest sense of peace and joy and it was like not wanting to be cliched like the seas are parted and I can now see the other side clearly and I'm just so grateful that I've got to this place so that's my story and I did it Woo. I don't know I mean I mean I'm, I'm crying too here like <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. And what an amazing story about how God is not just at work in the church, right? God is at work out there all the time. And I so love your story, Liz, about how, in a sense, you met God out there. And actually, of course, we come together as a church family of people who are never good enough. We're, we only come because we know we're not good enough and we're on a journey with Jesus. Um, but that's why we gather together. We're in here for out there. And I'm so grateful that you've both shared your stories. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm so amused because you don't know what I'm speaking about later, do you? There's a lot of resonance, let's just put it that way. Well, I think there is. You might, you might not recognise it, but I think there is. I think that without further ado, we should get on and do some baptising. We've got a few uh, formal words. Frisbee family, would you like to just come and stand up at the front? That would be awesome. Just want to stand across that way. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, I've got my formal words. Have you got your little booklets? You probably... Oh, you, uh, are they going to be on the screen or shall I do... Them? No, well, let's have your booklets because then you can answer. Yeah, because these are the only guys you need to answer as it happens. And actually, today, um, a CC and... Um, a CC and Phoenix are also being baptised, but today their parents are making promises on their behalf. And you will see that the words that we say together reflect that. But I, I just think it's the most wonderful thing that the whole family uh, have come to baptism all together. Uh, it's a really um, important marker, uh, for sure. So today, we really do thank God for Elliot and Liz, uh, Cece and Phoenix, who have come to be baptised. And so I'm going to ask you, Liz and Elliot, have you been baptised in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? I have. And are you ready, with your own mouth and from your own heart, to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? I am. Liz and Elliot, you've also brought a CC and Phoenix to baptism today, and you speak for them. As we trust God for their growth in faith, Will you promise to care for them, to pray for them, and to help them to follow Jesus? We will. 
I mean, I know you already do, but it's great that they publicly affirm this, you guys. But you can always kind of, you know, pull them up on it. I'm going to ask you, the people of God in this place, will you welcome the Frisbee family and uphold them in their lives in Christ? Please answer. Brilliant. Now, the candle is already lit. Uh, this is the Easter candle symbolizing the light of the risen Christ who is with us. And it's a really great bit of symbolism, so many bits of symbolism in our service. Because in baptism, God calls us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, Liz and Elliot, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you re renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I, I turn, turn to Christ. Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? I come to Christ. Awesome. Then I get to sign you with a little bit of oil, all four of you, if that's all right with you, just a little bit of oil. So let me just start with you, Phoenix. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Assisi, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Why the oil? I hear you cry. It's a sign of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How awesome is that? Liz, Christ claims you as his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Elliot, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. And let's say together... Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. And I can pray for you all. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. The symbolism continues because I'm going to say a prayer over the water. It doesn't really change the water, but it helps us to know that the water today is being used for quite a special reason. So I'm going to come over here and symbolically kind of put my hand over the water in this. It's a hot tub, but the water's not very warm. I'm just putting it out there. We praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your son, Jesus. On him you poured your spirit at his baptism in the River Jordan. He sent his followers to baptize all who turned to him. And so, Father, we ask that you bless this water, that those who are baptized in it may be cleansed in the water of life, filled with your spirit, and know themselves loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. Amen. And so let us affirm, together with those being baptised, our common faith in Jesus Christ. And do join me in the words in bold on the screen. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe, I believe and trust, trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, believe we believe and trust in one God, Father, Father Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Listen, Elliot, is this your faith? This is my faith. Brilliant. Then we should, without further ado, do some baptising. Right, let me just get me font sorted.
Has anyone already used water this morning for anything? Any of you younger people? Stefan, have you used water this morning? You're drinking? Fantastic. Anyone else use water this morning for anything? Make coffee? What have you used it for? You washed your hands. I'm so relieved that somebody here has washed this morning. And actually, what about you guys in the back? Oh, come on. Well, wish Liz happy birthday later. What about you, Bella? Oh, I forgot. What about you? Brushing my teeth. Brushing, more, more washing. So we've got a mixture there of having used water already this morning for washing and for bringing life. That's exactly what the water of baptism does. So we're going to pour some of the water that we've already blessed into the font. I think you've got a few grass bits there, guys, don't worry. Oh, thank you very much, Cliff. Um, and just find my little shell here. Do you know what? We use uh, a scallop shell because it's a marker of um, pilgrimage. And when we're baptised, it's the start, as we've both said, as a, a, a journey with Jesus. And pilgrims for centuries have used scallop shells just as a symbol of pilgrimage. And so that's why we use a scallop shell for the water. Now, I'd just like to find my uh, le uh, lectern here. Let me... Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter who goes first, but if I could, oh, sorry, I'm going to put that a bit lower so you can see over it. If anybody would like to come forward, if you're, um, not, if you're as short as I am, or shorter, you're very welcome to come closer to the font so that you can see what's going on. Um, let's have a towel ready. And brilliant, Assisi, come forward, and would you like to lean over the water, come right close, and Assisi, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There we go. Phoenix, would you like to... You can take all the time if you like. There we go. Brilliant. And Phoenix, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure you'd like a towel as well. We're going to have to share... Right, we're going to say a prayer all together, but uh, right now we're hopping into the pool. Who's going first? I better take my clip mic off. I'm nearly ready. You can go for it. Yeah, I'm going to join you in just a sec. Let's wait for Cliff to get round. <laughs> Let's just do the talky bits before we get right in. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Liz, you have reaffirmed the promises made on your behalf at your own baptism and have come to living faith in Jesus Christ. As a sign of dying to your old life, we're now going to get into the water. Let's do it. <laughs> I immerse you in these waters. R Rise to live for him. <laughs> There's a towel I think somebody might give you. If you're really lucky. Yeah. And I need those again. And I think Elliot's going to join me at this point. You're wet. <laughs> yeah, you're very, very wet. Come back this way. Come back this way. Awesome. Brilliant. Elliot, <laughs> you have reaffirmed the promises uh, made on your behalf at your own baptism, and you've come to living faith in Jesus Christ as a sign of dying to your old life. I immerse you in these waters. Rise to live for him. 
do you know what? I'm going to stay standing in this pool while we say a prayer for a whole Frisbee family. Do come this way. You can hug. That's all good. But kind of huddle together. Because we want to pray for you, that God who has received you by baptism into his church might pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you might daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith and one baptism. Elliot and Liz, Phoenix and Assisi. I've never done the peace standing in a tub of water. <laughs> Elliot and Liz, Phoenix and Assisi, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let's say together, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly father. We welcome you. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> know that we are going to go and get dry and uh, we have some hymns for you to sing uh, so do enjoy a time of worship um, and it during these songs the children and the youth will go out to their own groups uh, if you're in youth if you're in secondary school age Cliff do you want to stand up um, if you want to go out with Cliff and Lou Lou give us a wave Oh, Phil, sorry, Phil, give us a wave. Uh, if you're in secondary school age, you're really welcome to go with these guys. If you're in primary school age, you're really welcome to go out with the guys who are just leaving now. And Mike, who is going? So do feel free. And uh, if you're able and you'd like to, please stand as we worship together.
determined to sing this one. <laughs> going to invite Graham over to bring us our reading when he's ready. Thanks, Graham. The reading's taken from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. It's the, me <clears throat> the message version. Jesus then appeared, arriving at the Jordan River from Galilee. He wanted John to baptize him. John objected, I'm the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus insisted, do it. God's work, putting things right, 
all these centuries is coming together right now in this baptism. So John did it. The moment Jesus came up out of the baptismal waters, the skies opened up and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing on him. And along with the spirit, a voice, this is my son, chosen and marked by my love, the light of my life. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much. Do you know, um, Elliot, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but he said on the way, uh, just before the service, he said, do you know what? You know the reading we've got today? He said, we were driving along and a dove just came in front of us. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Like I say, God's at work in the world, right? (laughs) Oh, I think sometimes God does these things just to remind us. I mean, of course, a dove could have just flown across, but given the circumstances in the reading, I think that's just a lovely confirmation, isn't it? It's just fantastic, really encouraging. What a wonderful occasion. How wonderful to celebrate with you guys this morning. Now, I was baptised as a baby, and I suspect quite a few of you were as well. Um, and that's fantastic. I love baptizing children and babies. I'll baptize anybody, and if anybody's feeling a bit left out, then come and talk. The water's here. We could get... Yes, I I am not joking. If you want to come and renew your vows or whatever, we can do it at the end of the service. Just let me know. Um, We can book this again. It's a good borrow, so thanks. uh, St. Mary Southampton lent it to us. Anyway, I don't mind what age we are when we're baptized, but I must say that a full immersion baptism is amazing uh, to give us a picture of what is actually happening when we are baptised. And that's what I just want to think a little bit about this morning. And it turns out that geography is quite important when thinking about baptisms. Now, I loved geography at school. I loved learning about other countries. And back in the day when I was a medical student, I felt quite a strong call to serve overseas. I read all sorts of mission biographies. I used my long summer holidays for short-term mission trips. I even worked in Nepal for just six months as a doctor testing out my calling. And now here I am. My calling is fulfilled. I am a Jersey girl serving in this foreign country of (laughs) England. And I've even married one of the locals. Yep. (laughs) And now, obviously, there are certain differences and certain similarities uh, with my homeland. Um, I still get a bit overexcited about train rides and even about rivers, having been deprived of them in my childhood. And do you know what? It turns out there are different laws over here. Who knew? I discovered them a few years ago on a speed awareness course. <laughs> but, of co- but of course... <laughs> Ignorance of the law is no excuse, but who knew that you had to do 30 miles an hour when the lampposts are spaced at a regular distance? I had no idea. But it does seem uh, uh, that I'm in very good company, doesn't it? Uh, But I'm not sure that the Archbishop had such a good excuse for speeding (laughs) as I did. If you haven't seen it, the Archbishop of Canterbury, he got fined 500 quid for doing something like 26 and a 20 somewhere near Lambeth Palace. I felt quite sorry for him, to be fair. Anyway, geography has been really important to me in my life, and I know it's important to the Frisbee family because they love Italy. They were married in Assisi. They've even named their eldest daughter after the town. Uh, But, you know, geography is really important in our reading that Graham read for us today because John the Baptist, uh, it turns out, we found out earlier in that reading before the bit that was read to us, he appeared in the wilderness of Judea with his message to repent because the kingdom of heaven was near. And the wilderness of Judea is the area that borders the River Jordan. And that's where uh, Jesus met John in our reading today, asking John to baptize him. Now, geography is important here too, because this area where Jesus met John the Baptist is the same area where the Israelites gathered to cross the River Jordan and to enter the Promised Land. And there are echoes of that Exodus journey as we think about baptism today. To be honest, these guys have already referred a little to crossing through water into a new land. 
And you'll remember that the Exodus journey started back in Egypt more than a thousand years before Jesus was born. The Israelites had become slaves. They were oppressed by their masters, by the pharaohs in Egypt. And God had made a covenant with Abraham, who was the father of the tribe of Israel, that God would make him into a great nation, bless him and cause the nation of Israel to be a blessing. But here they are in Egypt, trapped. They are working like, well, they are slaves. They're dying. It is grim and their hope has gone. Well, we know the story, don't we? After a series of terrible plagues, Moses led the people out of Egypt and into the wilderness, chased by their oppressors, the Egyptian army. God led the Israelites across the Red Sea. He parted the waters so they could cross, while the Egyptians were drowned in the waters. And eventually, Israel reached the River Jordan, and under Joshua's leadership, God once again parted the waters and allowed them to cross into a new land the promised land that he had set aside for them, where he planned to help them live differently to the surrounding tribes, to live with God as king. And of course, it didn't go entirely according to plan. So now here we are, hundreds of years later, back at the River Jordan. Geography is important. Let's take a moment to reflect. As we've said over a thousand years earlier, the Israelites reached this point. God had released them from that time of slavery. He'd taken them on that journey through the wilderness. He'd given them the Ten Commandments, taught them how to live under his rule, given them a tabernacle in which to worship, and led them with a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. And it hadn't all been plain sailing because the Israelites rebelled. They kept doing things their own way, so much so that Moses and the whole generation who escaped Egypt weren't allowed to enter the promised land. They had been too disobedient. So it was Joshua who led the people across the Jordan River, just at this point where John the Baptist and Jesus met in today's reading. Just as he had done with the Red Sea, God parted the waters so that the Israelites could go through to the new land that he promised them. And it's worth remembering that point, that the Israelites who crossed the Jordan would have only heard about the parting of the Red Sea from their parents. And then they got to see this parting themselves of another sea as they crossed from wilderness to promised land. What an amazing affirmation of God's power and his promise. Once again, we see the importance of geography. After crossing from one land of hardship and oppression to a new land promised by God where he is king, of passing through the waters to get there. But sadly, as we know, the Israelites didn't rise to the potential of the promised land. They they just wanted to be like everybody else, like the tribes already there. They wanted their own human king. And most of the time, that didn't go well at all. So here we are at Jordan again, at about that same place where the Israelites crossed over. John the Baptist has been wandering in the wilderness, preparing the way for one who is to come, and at last put things right. God's chosen one, the Messiah. Jesus appears, and we should notice the geography. He is on the wilderness side. He's on the Egypt side of the river as he gets into the water to be baptized. Now, if we're surprised that Jesus wanted to be baptized by John, then it seems that John was even more shocked, exclaiming, I'm the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus' reply explains his request. Do it, he said to John. God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is coming together right now in this baptism. Jesus did it to identify with us. What happens at his baptism happens at ours. He goes into the waters of the Jordan on the wilderness side and he comes up from those waters in a new place, in a new land. As Jesus did, we enter the water on the wilderness side. We enter the waters from the kingdom of this world, the place where the powers and the principalities of this world would lead us astray, oppress and enslave us. Remember Egypt. Remember what Elliot shared. He shared those things. In baptism, we go through the water and we die to those things. They are washed clean from us. 
We wash off the chains of oppression, the distractions of the world, all the things that the Bible calls sin. And we emerge forgiven and free into the promised land where God is king. And you know what? A different wind blows in this land. It's the wind of the Spirit of God. As we heard, when Jesus was baptized, the Spirit came down on a dove and rested on Jesus. And Jesus heard God's affirmation, this is my son, chosen and marked by my love, delight of my life. <clears throat> it's for us as well. For us, it's through the spirit that we know we are God's children. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, it says this, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Going through the waters of baptism is such a powerful image for us. In baptism, we pass through the waters from the kingdom of this world to be reborn into the kingdom of God, where the wind is the spirit of God, reminding us that we're no longer slaves as we were in Egypt, but children of God. And the law in this land is love, to love God and to love our neighbor. In baptism, it's as though we come up out of the water under a new flag. We receive a new passport, one that we carry into the world in which we now live. And here it might seem that the geography blurs a little, because after baptism, we live under our new identities as children of God. But in the midst of the kingdom of this world, we're all a little bit of a mixture of both. I joked at the start of how I'm living away from my homeland of Jersey where the laws are different. But those of us who've been baptized are all living away from our homeland. We're living away from our homeland of heaven. And it's not always easy. It's all a bit of a muddle sometimes. But we need to keep reminding ourselves, hourly, daily, whatever it takes, that we have our true homeland. And uh, Hebrews puts it like this, for this world is not our permanent hand, home, sorry. This world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. As we look back to our baptisms, as we look back to the one that we've just seen of the Frisbee family being baptized, but maybe as we can look back to our own or even just to know that that is what happened, it reminds us that we've taken a step, that we live under a new flag now, we have a new passport. We can look back to the symbolism of dying under the water and of shedding all that distracts and enslaves us and then coming up into a new place where the wind that blows, the breath that fills us is the Holy Spirit who affirms us in our new identity as God's children and reminds us of who we really are. This image of going through the waters from the wilderness of the world into the promised land helps us to live well in this world with the certain hope that we are citizens of God's kingdom forever. And it helps us to pray that our true homeland, God's kingdom, would come here on earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for... Uh, the baptism that we've so enjoyed and celebrated this morning. Thank you for the amazing symbolism in that. And would you help us each to remember that through baptism, we become your children, washed clean and free to live in your power with a new identity and a new homeland. Would you help us to live with that in mind and to share that hope with those around us? Amen. We're going to sing, we're going to sing a song about the tension, if you like, of living under the flag of God's kingdom in the midst of the kingdom of this world. Raise a hallelujah. So if you'd like to, if you're able, please stand as we sing together. <coughs> i
And could I invite Susie to come and bring us our intercessions, please? Thank you. Good morning. Father, thank you we can come together freely today as a church family to worship you. You love this world and everyone within it. We don't deserve your love, your mercy, or your goodness, but your word says we were yet strangers while we were afar. God brought us near through the blood of Christ. God, you have handpicked us all despite our flaws and weaknesses. Your mercies are new every morning and you are watching after us all day and night. Creator God, in Jesus' name, 
We give thanks for our country and its government. We pray for our Prime Minister, leaders of other political parties, bosses, leaders and trendsetters. For those who set targets at home, at work, in the streets. For all who yield power. May your Holy Spirit rest upon them, guiding them to bring peace, reconciliation and prosperity. Loving God, we pray for the sick and the troubled, for the fearful and alone, for those in pain and at home, for those in pain at home, at work, in the streets and here at, at church. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon them, giving them courage, hope and peace, with knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and sadness. May the skills and knowledge of those who care for the sick be fully used to help and to bring about healing. Thank you for the gifts and talents of all those who work in healthcare. We lift up to you our newly crowned King Charles III for Queen Camilla, Camilla and the royal family following the wonderful coronation last weekend. Father, we ask that the preparations for the celebration to be held in this building and garden next Saturday will go smoothly. May the plans made fall smoothly into place, the volunteers full of energy and creativity. May existing friendships deepen and new ones be formed. Cause the eyes and ears of those who don't know you to be opened. May they meet with your presence in this surroundings. Help us to be bold, confident, and friendly as we declare our faith in you. Heavenly Father, at the start of Christian Aid Week, we raise up to you the work of this charity. Cause your Holy Spirit to bring this fundraising week for Christian Aid to the minds of many in Welly Park through various means causing a desire to donate generously. May all those who give generously be blessed by you. We ask for your blessings to be upon all the work of Christian Aid and partners here in the UK and around the world. May they be a tool to project your love to everyone they support. For those of you who feel comfortable um, kindly raise your um, hands towards Elliot and Liz. Father, as we gather to support the Frisbee family, Elliot, Liz, Assisi and Phoenix, this morning, we ask for your blessing upon them. Keep them in the palm of your hands. May their talents be used to spread your fragrance to their families, friends, neighbours and colleagues opening the door for them to come to know you. Bless them with abundant lives. Thank you for the good plans you have for them. May they thrive as they continue to put their trust and faith in you alone. Thank you. Finally, Father, thank you that you keep the record straight and you have seen every unfairness we experienced and how it has impacted our lives. We declare that you are our vindicator and that you will make our wrongs right. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's just stay in an attitude of prayer as we give thanks for the collection.
We don't pass the plate round. It's just outside um, if anybody wants to give. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for everybody that does give through um, bank accounts or um, in what, by whatever means. Lord, our prayer is that all that is given to the church would be used to further your kingdom, to share your love in this community and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my first job in notices, coming towards the end of our service, it's notices time, but very excitingly, we have some bans of marriage. And uh, I think Thomas and Victoria are here. Oh, and do you want to wave? Because I don't want to draw attention. If you're shy, then, then don't wave. But it's really lovely to have you with us, guys. Um, so I published the bans of marriage between Thomas Alexander Vining and Victoria Charlotte Louise Young, uh, both of this parish. Um, this is the first time of asking, and if anyone knows any reason why they shouldn't be married, just have a word with me afterwards. Uh, but why don't we just pray for them now? Lord, thank you so much for Thomas and Victoria uh, for their wedding plans coming up. We pray that you would bless their plans, but more than that, that you would give them a really brilliant marriage that would just be a blessing to all those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Fantastic. Um, what else is happening? Uh, it's already been mentioned, really. Christian Aid Week. We don't do uh, a, like a delivery of envelopes anymore, but there are some out on the table. So if you would like to give cash in the usual way that we have done in past years, then grab an envelope, take it home, and bring it back next week. And David Gers really kindly agreed to make sure it gets to the right place. Um, if you're like me and, and you just can't find any cash in your pockets anymore, then you can do it online through our newsletter. Uh, you'd be really welcome to do it that way if, if you'd like to give. And then um, we have a festival here next Saturday. We're super excited about it. Uh, it's just an opportunity for a party. There's no hidden agenda here. We have some amazingly talented musicians. There's one over there, there's one over there, there's two over there, there's several, they're all around. There's one at the back. Oh yes, lots of better at the back. There's lots of our acts. It's going to be brilliant. At two o'clock, it's been opened by the mayor of Tess Valley. Don't miss it. There's going to be a barbecue. Um, oh, there's, there's the trailer. Um, if you want to know who the acts are and when everything's happening, then it's all on the website um, and on the poster out there. Do you know what? We, I know it's not going to surprise you. We could still do with a bit of help. Um, Peter will be manning the stand. Is that all right, Peter? Um, and just letting people know. If you, if you haven't, we're so grateful to all of you who have signed up because we can't do it without you. And we know it will be really fun. Um, so uh, we could still do with a bit more help. If you've not been able to volunteer and you are able, we'd be so grateful if you could lend a hand. Not for the whole time. Uh, but just for an hour here or there, and the needs are up on the board. So thank you so much for uh, any time you're able to spend. Um, there's no morning prayer tomorrow at 10. There is cafe tomorrow, 11 till 12.30. There's communion after cafe tomorrow. It's usually the second Monday with all of those bank holidays. We've just gone for the first Monday where it isn't a bank holiday and uh, decided we'll have communion then. Um, so you'd be really welcome to join us for any of those things. And uh, next week, we have our usual services at 8.30 and 10. Haven't decided if we're putting the seats back, actually. We quite like it this way around, but you can tell me what you think later. Uh, we have a final song, and then we'll end our service shortly by sending the Frisbee family out uh, with their candles alight. But let's uh, stand if we're able and sing in Christ alone. <laughs>
please do join us for coffee and biscuits afterwards. We'd love to chat. I know that the children are going to come and float boats on the pond here. Uh, I'm not joking about baptism. If anybody would like to think about that, please do grab me and we might be able to make use of this later if that is what you would like or we'll just find another time. But don't miss the moment, please. If anyone would like prayer, there are low red seats in the back corner and there'll be friends who'd love to pray with you for anything that's going on in your life. I'm going to say a final blessing and then I have candles for all the Frisbee family and we're going to send them out first today. But first of all, a blessing. So may the God of all grace, who's called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Right, let me get those candles. They said they'd give me a taper, but I think I've been let down. I don't know. Look, I can manage, I can manage. I, I think Elliot should come and light them, actually. Hello. Hello, do you want to light all of it? What's, do you want to hold it through this? There we go. There we go. Lit candles are a brilliant uh, sign, if you like, of Jesus, the light of the world. And when we give these guys candles at the end of a baptism service, we're thinking about how we've moved from a place of darkness, the kingdom of this world, to a place lit by the light of Jesus. And that's what it symbolizes. And walking out uh, with the candle symbolizes taking the light of Christ out from this place into the world. And so do join me in the words on the screen. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Elliot and Liz, Assisi and Phoenix, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your lives. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. And so let us all, when we're ready, go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Do you want to go out that way? Lead the way out, guys. I'll come with you because I'll get in the coffee queue quicker.
you, how about you were the word in the beginning?